hadith is true? Or are you Quran only? No, I, I, I follow the Quran and the hadith. And the hadith. Okay, because you just, said, you just said that the, the Quran's never been changed. Yeah? But in Aisha's hadith, she said that there were some verses that were lost. The verse on stoning and the verse on breastfeeding adults. She said that during the death of Muhammad, it was under her pillow and the tame sheep ate it, or a tame goat. Don't know whether sheep or goat, but one of the two. If Aisha's hadith is true, which you said you agreed with, and she said that there are verses missing from the Quran, how can the Quran be perfect? Okay. First of all, the primary transmission of the Quran is oral memorization, not by the written manuscript. So okay. it really doesn't matter whether the goat ate verses or not. That's so, irrelevant. Wait, one second. You, 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 you. Secondly, secondly, um, the, 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 the breastfeeding, adultery, etc. If you know how the abrogation works, not all abrogation is in the Quran. Did you know that? There are four different types of abrogation. Okay. So, so, so this is. I think you need to look into this because there are abrogation during the time of the Prophet that the Sunnah, his teaching, got abrogated later on but it's not in the quran and there are those there are and so for example for example the for, <laughs> okay so not everything is abrogated from the quran it's outside the quran the teachings of the prophet okay, so what, what is the quran the quran is the final revelation from allah given to the angel gabriel then conveyed to muhammad peace be upon him okay. to be followed and and then the companions memorized so what was so if something is abrogated from outside the quran outside the word of allah how is out something outside the word of allah better than what is the word of allah very good question so here's a lot of misconception that a lot of christians don't know the quran is not the only form of revelation that we believe do you know that we believe the Sunnah, the teachings of the Prophet is also a form of revelation. So this doesn't apply. So your question is redundant. So 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 the only difference, wait, wait, wait. The only difference is this. The Quran is the verbatim speech of Allah to Muhammad, peace be upon him. But the mode of the Sunnah is from the words of the Prophet. That's the only difference. Otherwise, they're both forms of revelation. What you're saying is the word of the Prophet supersedes the word of Allah. No, it, it, no, I never said that. But that's what you implied. I never said that. You said, you said, if I'm, if I'm right, the Quran is the verbatim word of Allah. It's just a different mode. But you said the Quran is the verbatim word of Allah given to directly, given directly to Jibril, which he gave to Muhammad. Yeah? Yes. So if the Quran is no, 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 why, no, no, no. Focus what I said about the Sunnah. What did I say about the Sunnah? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the Quran. If the Quran is the verbatim word of Allah. Yes. How can the word of Muhammad abrogate the word of Allah? No, they complement. Okay, so they complement together. Okay, the only difference is the Quran is the direct speech of Allah to Muhammad. The Sunnah is from the words of the Prophet Peace that's inspired. So Allah says in Surah Al-Najm, chapter 53, that the Prophet does not speak out of his desires, but it's an inspiration from Allah. Okay. So that's the only difference. It's just the different modes, but the two forms of revelation. Secondly, you mentioned, does the words of the Prophet, does it supersede the words of Allah? No, it doesn't. It complements. Why? I'll give you the evidence. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Nahl, chapter 16, verse 44. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in chapter 16, verse 44, from the Quran. Allah mentions, yes, yes, you could, you could open up. Allah mentions that it is He whom Allah sent His messenger to teach us, to teach us the book. He's our teacher. The Quran mentions, so the preservation of the Quran means it comes with the preservation of the Sunnah. If we want to understand the Quran, we have to look, we have to look through the prophetic lens. Open it, chapter 16, verse 44. Yes. A lot of Christians don't know this. That's why the Prophet was sent. He wasn't like a postman, just receiving the message. No, he's teaching us. So his teaching is the Sunnah. Whatever the Quran was revealed to him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, explained to us. When the Quran is revealed, yes. and then the Sunnah abrogates the Quran. No, it doesn't make sense. No, 
the Sunnah is the commentary of the Quran. So they work together, chewing gloves. And and the Prophet does not uh, the, oh, hang on. The Prophet does not abrogate out of his desires. I already said that to you. The Quran mentions in chapter 53. Wait one second. The Quran mentions in chapter 53. One second. Ab okay, abrogation meaning cancellation. Okay. So for example, the alcohol. Allah mentions in Surah Baqarah chapter 3 verse 219. They ask you concerning wine. Tell them that in within them, within wine, there's some good and and, and harm. But the harm outweighs the benefit. So Allah is discouraging now. Even though it's still permissible to drink at that time, but it's discouraging. Then Allah mentions in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 43. Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you believe, when you stand up for salah, do not be in the state of intoxication. Now the salah has been legislated. You have to pray five times a day. So now a Muslim at that time, the, the companion cannot pray if he's in a state of intoxication. But maybe they can drink overnight, nightclub, possibly. Then the final, then the final revelation of the of alcohol in Surah, uh, Surah Maida, chapter five, verse ninety. Ya ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, or you believe, inna al khamri wa maisru. Most certainly intoxicants gambling, wa anzabu azlamu, the education of stones, divination by arrows, rishtul amil shaitan, these are Satan's handiwork. Fashtunibu la alukum tuflihun, abstain from such handiwork so that you may prosper. So here, the Quran is a progressive revelation. It wasn't revealed in one book, it was revealed over a 23 year period. So can Allah make a mistake? No. So why abrogate? Because the society at that time was not ready to give up alcohol. The first call of the Prophet is not to give up alcohol. The first call of the Prophet is stop worshipping idols. Stop worshipping created things. Worship Allah, the God of Abraham, the God of Jesus, the God of Isaac. Yeah. Then slowly, when their faith is strengthened, right? It's like a therapy. It's like a therapy. Imagine if you find someone who's an alcoholic, you tell them straight away, you know what, give up alcohol. It's not going to work. It takes over time. Then when, Allah, when the Sahaba, when the companions, when their faith are strong, they can give up alcohol. Do you know what happened in Medina? As soon as that revelation, the final revelation regarding alcohol is prohibited, the barrels of wine is flooded in Medina. They were, they were drunken people. Now I want to ask you this question because you asked a lot of questions. But I, I want to throw it back to you, yeah? How can one single human with no military experience, with no political experience, a shepherd, a businessman, no education, unlettered man, could never read nor write, how is he able to, to transform from this barbaric nation who used to drink alcohol, who used to bury the females alive, to conquer Ro Roman and Persian Empire, who were the two greatest empire at that time. You tell me that. You tell me that. Within two decades. Within two decades. Within two decades. You just follow these brothers. The thing is. Okay. I would ask you a different question. No, 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 no. Answer my question. Answer my question. How? Answer my question. Answer my question. Look, 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 look. Answer my question. Abrogation is like amendments. You know, like for example, in America, you have second amendments, etc. It's based on specific circumstances. Amendments made on a man-made Okay. Let this. You said the Quran is the verbatim word. Yes. Yes. Allah. Yes. Then why would it need abrogation? Allah mentioned the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number two. Allah mentions, never do we abrogate a verse unless we replace it, something better or equal to it. This is in Allah's wisdom. He knows, he knows, he knows that at this particular moment, the companions can give up alcohol at this particular time. So that's the reason why the Quran was not revealed in one book from heaven. The Quran was, wait one second, the Quran was revealed over a 23 year period. Allah mentioned the Quran, indeed we have revealed to you Muhammad in stages. That's the wisdom of the Quran. The Quran is like a therapy, alhamdulillah, rehabilitation. The Quran was not revealed one book from heaven. Okay, that's what you say. But that's what the Quran say and the okay, Sunnah. But you're saying that um, better verses abrogated the worst ones. Sorry? So the ones, the, the verses that got abrogated yes. were replaced by better ones. Because Allah is all knowing. So, um, um, Surah 9, verse 29. Oh, uh, okay. Go on. Go on, go on. Throw it. Throw it. No, you go on. Explain it. No, you, you, you brought it up. You explained it to me. That verse abrogated the, the verse where it said you can, basically, your religion is yours, my religion is mine. And then it was abrogated by 929. No. Listen. This is. Do you know 929? A lot, of, a lot of things have changed. By the way, chapter nine, verse. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Can I, can I, can I, okay. Let's have, let's have one go on. Let's see. Let, let, let's see how much you know about the Quran, yeah. Okay. So let's see. 
Do you know what Asbab and Nuzul is? No, 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 wait, 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 wait. No, 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 say, 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 one second, one second. Uh, I'm speaking to this gentleman. How much do you know about the tour? Let's have a one How much do you know about the tour? I know, I know quite a lot. Why, why, are, we, why are we derailing? You mentioned chapter 9, verse 29. Don't answer. Yeah. Chapter 9, verse 29. Chapter 9, verse 29. Go on. Fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and who do not consider unlawful what Allah has and his messenger has made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who are given the scripture. Fight until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled. What's your point? So this verse where it says fight those who do not believe what Muhammad and Allah has made unlawful abrogated a former verse which was basically live and let live. Okay, ex educate. Why? Okay, first of all, you have to know Ulum al Quran, the signs of the Quran. You have to know the historical background, how the Quran was revealed. This is what I'm saying to you that go, you haven't studied the Quran properly. The Quran was revealed over 20, 23 period period in specific circumstances in its historical context. Mm -hmm. When was this verse revealed? You tell me. I'm not going to say to you, you do your own research. And you come back to me, you come back to me, you come back to me, okay? You come back to me and you tell me why was this verse revealed, okay? So, so I'm not going to spoon feed you. You're saying why, why, this, why was this verse revealed? Yes. Why? I'm not going to spoon feed you. It was revealed because... No, why was this verse revealed? Do you know yes or no? I'll tell you why it was revealed. I'll tell you why it was revealed. You can, okay, let's see. But you just said you don't know. No, but, no. Listen, bro. I've asked you... And you said, and I answered, speak. I answered every you said, question. You, you haven't even answered a single question on mine. What did you ask me? I asked you, yeah. why was this verse revealed? Okay, I'm going to tell you. This verse was revealed because Muhammad had finally got numbers behind him so that he could subjugate people. No. Before when he was no. in Medina, no. he was no. weak. No. Before, no, when, you, you, listen, you, you asked me to tell you. You, you asked me to no. tell you. I'm telling you. He's Before, his you when he was in Medina, no. he was weak. You can't so he's not allowed. You this is not opinion. Give me evidence. Excuse me. This is not opinion. Give me evidence. This is real fact. When he was in Medina, he was weak. Give me evidence. Listen, you asked me to tell you. Give me evidence. Give me evidence. Excuse me. Don't lie. Excuse me. Before when he no, 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 no. Show, show, look, look, your body language. Before, look, look, show me. Second, look, face it. No, face it. Face it to me. Before, Why are you facing it here? When he was in Medina, he was weak, and because he was weak, he didn't have the numbers to subjugate people. When he got to Mecca, he had more people. That's why he then turned. He to round it up. It that's why he religion. then turned. So he doesn't understand said, how Asbab and Nuzul works. No, he doesn't. That's why he then turned. Okay, and, have you ever heard of Asbab and Nuzul? Ask him when, when this, no. this chapter you don't know. Okay, when, let me let me let me educate you. Let, let me educate you. Let me educate. Let me educate you. I asked you to educate me. You asked me to tell. Let me educate you. No, wait. I asked you to educate me. You're making stuff up. Bro, you asked me to educate. This is recorded. You asked you to educate me, and you said no. I'm not going to spoon feed you. So now I've got the spoon. Listen. Give me evidence. Everything that you said, give me evidence. Watch out. Listen, it's to do the bottom of Tabuk. I know, I know. They won't talk about the Ottoman Empire. I know, I know, I know. Talk about the Ottoman Empire. It says fight. It doesn't say kill. It says fight. When you fight, it's in war. <laughs> when you fight, is it in context of war or you, you just kill innocent trade, people? No? Google it, you're on your phone. Trans Sahara slave trade. Google it. What does Islam do to Africa? Why are you before I was like to argue about religion? Thank you very much. I'm not here to argue. It's, we're talking. It's Thank not you hard. very much. You, you guys coming Trans with Africa. They came, they came with a negative Trans agenda. Trans I'm only here to convey the message of Islam. You like it? Islam take it. If not, take care of yourself. Have you have you read Google it, you're on your phone. T R a, uh, have you read your Bible? I don't feel. No, no, no. Honestly, don't, don't, don't engage. Don't engage. Don't engage. It's to do with the. It's to do with the Battle of Tabuk to the Romans. It was in the context of battle. No, no. Your Bible says. Your Bible says. Your Bible says. And I'll quote you. Let me quote you First Samuel fifteen three. Shall I? Your Bible says. Your Bible says. Kill the babies. Kill the children. Kill the animals. Yeah. Shall I show? Shall I show you First Samuel fifteen? Yeah. Let's let's open that. Let's take your stand. By the way, Benjamin Netanyahu uses this verse. Exactly. Benjamin Netanyahu. Okay. Using Let's see. These as to justify you? their killing of look, the babies. Look, by, by the way, by do you condemn killing of the babies? Honestly speaking, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't condemn killing of the babies. I think it's very unhealthy. No, 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 no. 
First Samuel 15:3. Do you know? It's killing people. Yeah, you can't see. Amalekites. Yes. 15:3. And by the way, Benjamin Netanyahu uses this to kill the Amalekites who were the original Palestinians. Okay. So. Because of Bible, they are Okay. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish, I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. You will never find something like this in the Quranities of the Prophet. In fact, the Prophet, yes, the Prophet, what if I show you something worse? The Prophet, peace be upon him, in the Hadith, I'm giving you evidence. What if I show you something Let me give you the evidence, let me give you the evidence. The Prophet, peace be upon him, found an innocent, an innocent person getting killed in battle. What, an innocent woman getting killed. And the Prophet said, why did you do it? It is prohibited. At least we Muslims, we have ethics in war. You have nothing. Really? You can kill donkeys. Yeah, yeah. You can kill donkeys and children. Women and children. Women and children. Women and children. Don't come and lecture me about the violence of Islam. What does this prove? Sorry. What does it prove? Go on. Justify. Go on. Justify. Justify. Justify this. Go on. Tell me. Tell me. Justify. Justify. What are you trying to prove? What was the first words of that verse? It says, Samuel said to Saul, I am the Lord. I am one, the Lord sent to anoint you king. He came to debate. He came to debate. I am the one. I, he came to debate. I was speaking to a very nice Christian gentleman. They came and interjected. Okay. I am the one, the Lord sent to anoint you king of his people Israel. Were you talking to them about Islam? All I did, there was a nice Christian gentleman. He just wanted to know about Islam and about Christianity, right? And he wanted to go. But out of his goodwill, he just wanted to know more. This gentleman came here and doing you know shotgun tactics right derailing the conversation so i said to i said to the gentleman i said to the gentleman here that look let me finish my conversation with him then i can speak to you one to one then was, sir, one second about islam. yeah about islam and christianity okay. then and this christianity. gentleman yeah and christian then what then the, then this gentleman came over and without asking my permission he says can i ask you a question Bro, listen, so this is very rude no courtesy madam you're a good person you're a good person madam. you have this type of do you know what Allah says in the Quran? Do you know what, madam? Thank you very much, madam. Thank you very much, madam. This is your tactic. Thank you very much, madam. Let the madam speak. Let the madam speak. You were teaching Islam. Yes. I was teaching Islam, yes. I was not attacking Christianity. Okay, hold on. Were you teaching anything about Christianity in your Islamic teachings? Because he's being disingenuous. He came to me. When you were teaching Islam, were you teaching anything about Christianity in what you were teaching that person? Some. No, no. I was only conveying the message of Islam no. and then he asked the question about Christianity and then no, I just no, no, no. because then you derive him to say you have to ask your pastor because you know why no. it's why I think sometimes there's a the Okay I, I respect your opinion. No madam no madam ma no madam madam I respect you but ma madam I answered all of his questions. He said but you haven't asked me so then I said do you mind if I ask a question and he said Yes. You, why are you saying that I can't do it? Madam, you're the arbitrator here. I really appreciate yeah, it. Madam, I respect you. By the way, do you know Allah says the Quran about the Christians? They so sawar, not all of the same. She's a good person. You came with you came with an ill intention. If you're teaching Islam, teach Thank you very much. But he came here. He came thank you, madam. Thank you. That's what I'm doing. Thank you very much, madam. The thing is, he's insulting Christianity. I'm you insulted Islam. You insulted. You insulted. Okay, is the Bible corrupt? Yes, of course. See? But is that disrespect? Is that disrespect? You're saying that the Bible is corrupt. But I never use that. Okay, because it's not. I never said you weren't even there in the conversation. That's what I'm saying. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam. By the way, do you know Allah says? Do you know Allah says in the Quran? Madam, madam, do you know what Allah says in the Quran? I'm not allowed to generalize Christians. I'm not allowed to generalize Christians. Do you know what? I can say this confidently. My grandfather was a chief imam. My mother was a marinata. He converted to Christianity. You know, people should respect each other. Thank you very much, madam. That's what I'm doing, madam. Don't talk about Christianity because you are teaching Islam.
Islam. You don't know about Christianity. You that's, understand yeah, it. Yeah, that's your opinion. I respect that. I respect that. Islam, you don't think about Christians. So yeah. please, come on. No, I respect that, madam. You, uh, uh, madam, madam. Wait, wait, one second. One second. Mad madam, I respect you for that. Do you know, do you know what Allah says in the Quran? We Muslims are not allowed to generalize Christians. Do you know what Allah says? They're not all the same. There are some Christians who are good, but there are some Christians who are not good. Just like the Muslims. There are some Muslims that are good, some Muslims are bad. No problem. That's what I'm doing, madam. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ah, oh, man, subhanAllah. I ho hope all of you are doing well, brothers and sisters. Now look, first of all, I, I know a lot of people would say that I could have been a bit more calmer. That's one thing I need to work on. But I can't have Christian gentlemen who came here with an in intention, okay? You know, you know, indirectly trying to insult the, the Prophet Sallallahu okay? And I as a Muslim cannot take that. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the, the previous Christian gentleman, the first Christian gentleman, he was very nice. He just wanted to know about Islam. He read some parts of the Quran. So I was having a nice conversation with him. Then you had one Christian gentleman that came, tried to derail the conversation. Then you had another <laughs> Christian trying to derail the conversation. And then he went out of control. So um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide, uh, I think his name is Jared. I think his name is Jared. May Allah guide him, I mean. And may Allah guide them as well. I mean. So they were asking regarding uh, abrogation, uh, they were asking about uh, Aisha al Anha, you know, uh, a verse was eight by, by the goat. Uh, obviously, I responded, I don't want to repeat again, but, um, but yeah, may Allah forgive me, you know, I mean, may Allah forgive all of us, may Allah guide them, I mean. Yeah, subhanAllah, with this same chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيدٌ عَلَيْهِمْ عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفُ رَحِيمٌ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَهُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْعَزِيمِ There certainly has come to you a messenger from among yourself. He is concerned by your suffering, anxious for your well-being and gracious and merciful to the believers. But if they turn away, then say, O Prophet, Allah is sufficient for me. There is no God worthy of worship except Him. In Him, in him I put my trust, and He is Lord of the mighty throne. So, subhanAllah, Allah talks Allah. about our Prophet Sallallahu and importance, and how yeah. He loved His Ummah, and how He was oh. anxious for the merciful. suffering of the Ummah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ All we hear, you know, Allah will honor His deen, and Allah will protect His deen. We are just trying to answer the question they, they come with an intention, ill intention. Yes, yes. And the ill intention is to provoke Islam, derail and Islam, and because confuse people with their rhetorics. But the subhanAllah, our deen is beautiful, our deen is clear, and they, you know, they without research, they don't even know what their Bible say. The Bible says 1 Samuel 15, and the whole chapter is killing babies, killing children innocent uh, human life you know so uh, the sanctity of human life has been completely broken subhanallah and our our religion is full of compassion and mercy even in war situation brother Rahan you mentioned that Prophet legislated that you do not kill a monk you do not kill a children you do not kill a fruit bearing tree subhanallah so we have those uh, even in the war situation, Prophet legislated uh, the exception that we should abide by. And we should not go uh, with anger, you know. Surely anger is from Saitan, you know. So, you know, do not act upon anger, you know. Uh, so, we, uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding of this deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those brothers who speak. And they surely have an ill intention. We Amen. ask that Allah guide them to Islam. Amen. And Allah, you know, and uh, uh, you know, and let's take this opportunity to uh, make sure you make dua for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Yeah. They are going through a serious crisis, a humanitarian crisis, and, and their life and death situation. And yeah. you know, Subhanallah, we we are living in a peace and comfort in UK life not realizing what's going on but at least we can do dua make sure we sincere and sincerely raising our hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the real help is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if we try our best but the real aid is from Allah so we ask Allah's help in the situation we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our affairs I mean and we ask may Allah forgive me may Allah forgive forgive all of us all of us if any mistake happen it's from us 
if any khair is from Allah, exactly. so Jazakumullah khair, brother. Uh, Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your reminder. I mean, and just to add one more thing, you will never see me in my da'wah that I ever use um, controversial verses of the Bible because I feel it's counterproductive in da'wah. But in this specific situation, if somebody is, is um, lying against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he was violent, etc., then I just want to expose the double standards, okay? Um, so this is my first time ever that I use First Samuel 15.3, otherwise I don't use it. I'm just trying to expose the double standards. So I, I want you to understand this. I was giving da'wah to Jared, the first Christian gentleman, but it did not become a da'wah when I spoke to the other two uh, uh, people, right? So this was a refutation. It wasn't da'wah. So I want, I want the brothers and sisters to distinguish between refutation and da'wah. So the da'wah was to the first Christian and the refutation was the other two Christians, okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Laysu sawa'a, they're not the same. So we're not allowed to treat all Christians with the same brush. This is not allowed. This is haram. In okay? fact, in five, yes. uh, chapter 5, verse 82, Allah mentioned about uh, you will find the most hatred towards the believers, uh, the Jews and the polities. Yes. And uh, the, uh, the kindest uh, towards the believers are uh, the Christian and among them, those who say, uh, those who are not arrogant, among them the priests and monks, yes, they are not yes, arrogant. Yes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly laid out that not everyone has said within the Christian. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide uh, those brothers uh, um, in, in Christianity and, and they can see uh, the light in Islam. Um, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Siraj al Munira. He was the beacon of the truth the light. Of the light yep. So whoever followed that light, and Allah said, Well, ladina amanu yukhrujukum min al amanu. Uh, the, the verse goes like that, uh, that uh, those who believe Allah will take them out of darkness to the yes, light. Yes, yes. So I ask Allah to uh, uh, give us the light and give us the light to these uh, people who are seeking. Yes. And may Allah uh, accept and pardon our uh, shortcoming. I mean, and just just to add one more thing, yeah. uh, brothers and sisters, yeah, a lot of people say that we have to show good adab, yeah. we have to be soft, but this only applies to those who are willing to listen and in the spirit of learning. But it's not part of the adab that you be soft to those who have hatred of Islam. Okay, so there's a time and place that you have to be, you know, you, you have to be soft to those who are sincere. They want to learn in the spirit of learning. Okay, of course they can ask challenging questions. That's not a problem. But at least they do it in a respectful, in a civil yeah. conversation. But there are times and places where, when you have the enemies of Islam, those who have ill intention against Islam and they're just here just to, you know, cause problems. Then I'm sorry to say you cannot be soft with them. You've got to be a bit harsh with them, assertive. But of course, one thing I need to improve on is my temperament. You know, perhaps I need to be a bit more level-headed. But that's something I need to work on. And I'm only interested to give that one. I'm not interested to refute people. But if there are people who are being disrespectful and interrupt, what can we do? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept our efforts. Um, and, and please keep making dua, continue to make dua for our Palestinian brothers and sisters and the rest of the oppressed uh, um, brothers and sisters in the world. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.